Hello, everybody. So today we're talking literal equations and formulas. Our learning objective, uh, maybe it would help if I move out of the way. I can rewrite and use literal equations and formulas. Make sure you get this down in our notebook. Now let's get into some of this vocab. So talking literal equations, we better define it. When we're talking literal equations, that's an equation with two or more variables. Could look something like what we have coming up in the PowerPoint here. These literal equations, we can rewrite by isolating any one of the variables using our opposite, our inverse operations. This is called solving for a variable. It's gonna be the same thing as solving our equations from before, except now we're dealing with different variables. When we rewrite literal equations, we may have to divide by a variable or a variable expression. In this lesson, assume that all variables and variable expressions are not equal to zero because dividing by zero is not defined. Some examples of literal equations include this, x equals b minus c divided by a. Look at all those different variables, a lot of variables in an equation. Here's another example, z equals two-fifths x times y plus three so they could have numbers mixed in with it as well could be all variables like in that other example there but those are literal equations two or more variables in an equation something else we should define let's define formula formula is an equation that states a rule for relationship among quantities formula is a type of literal equations in the formula d equals rt the D is isolated. You can rearrange this formula to isolate any variable by using our inverse operations. Here's some more examples of formulas. We have circumference formula, which you might have seen before. Circumference is equal to two times pi times r. We also have the area of a triangle, which you might have seen before. A is equal to one half times base times height. Let's look at some steps. When solving for a variable in these literal equations or in these um, formulas, three steps to follow. First step, locate the variable we're asked to find in the equation. Step number two, identify the operations and the order of those operations that are around that variable. Step three, do the opposite. Do the inverse operations to get that variable all alone. Let's do some examples. Example one, I kind of broke down into two things. We have example 1a, example 1b. Make sure we get both of these in our notes. <clears throat> but for example one, we have x plus y is equal to 15. We want to solve for x. So solving for x here, first let's in the equation locate x and hopefully that's not too hard to locate because it's the very first thing in our equation second step let's recognize let's identify the operations happening around our variable well around x i see a plus y so to get x all alone to solve for x i have to get rid of that plus y get rid of that plus y by doing the opposite subtracting y so subtract y on both sides y minus y goes away, becomes zero. So all I'm left with on this side is the x that we wanted, 15 minus y. This is a weird thing. This is a little thing that's different from our other equations before. We used to be able to combine those because they were two numbers. Now it's a number and a variable. Can't combine them, so we just write them right next to each other. Negative y plus 15. There's example 1a. Solving literal equations for a variable, just get that variable all by itself using our opposite operations. Example 1b, solve p times q equals x for q. So just like in example 1a, let's locate our variable we want. We want q, so locating q, I can see it's being multiplied to the p. Since I recognize it's being multiplied there, I want to do the opposite to get rid of it. The opposite of multiplication, division. So we're going to divide both sides by p. When I do, those p's are going to cancel. 
out on that um, left side, and I'm left with Q. X divided by P, those are two variables. We can't reduce that, so we can just keep it as X over P. Let me get that out of the way a little bit. Okay, screenshot of this one. We should be all right. Just in case you couldn't see before. Example one. Let's get into example two. Example two, solving formulas for a variable. Same way as solving our little equations. But here's a formula for the area of a triangle. We have area A is equal to one half times base B times height, H. It says solve for H. So we want to get that H all alone. We have our equation, our formula. Let's locate the H in that equation. Well, again, hopefully it's kind of easy. H this time is the very last variable. It's being multiplied by one half. It's being multiplied by B. So we have to get rid of those. First, I'm going to get rid of that one half. To get rid of multiplication, I divide. Now, when I'm dividing by a fraction, what I'm really doing is multiplying its reciprocal. So one half is one on top, two on the bottom. I want to multiply its reciprocal, meaning I flip those numbers around and I multiply both sides by it. So I'm going to multiply both sides by two over one. Two times A divided by one, well, that's just going to be two A. 2 over 1 can cross cancel with our 1 over 2, and those cancel out just like what we want. So we're left with 2a is equal to bh. We want h all alone. We're almost there. We have a b now with it, so we want to get rid of that b by dividing it. When they're right next to each other, no operation. That means multiplication. b and h right next to each other, meaning they're being multiplied. So we could get rid of it by dividing. Whatever we do on one side, do to the other. So I'm getting rid of this B by dividing. I have to do it to the other side as well. Now I have 2A over B is equal to H. Can I reduce anything on that left side? 2A over B? The answer is no. So that's my final answer. 2A over B equals H. All right, let's use uh, let's use this in an application instead of just like messing with formulas or equations. There are actually reasons to move this stuff around. It makes it easier for us to uh, solve different science questions. When we have these formulas isolated for a variable, it's easier to just plug them in and then see what it equals instead of plugging in our numbers and then trying to solve after that. So, for example, here's this one. We're talking about the formula of circumference of a circle. We have C equals pi times D, where C is circumference, and D stands for our diameter. It says the circumference of a bowl is 18 inches. What is the bowl's diameter? Leave the symbol pi in your answer. I'm going to take that. I'm going to reduce that even more. So I'm going to come up with a final answer here. But let's see it in action. We want to know what the diameter is. So we want to solve this thing for D. Diameter. I can locate it because I could see it's right after pi. So the only thing I have to get rid of is pi. When pi is right next to a variable, when anything's right next to a variable without any operation signs, it means multiplication. So since it's being multiplied, we can divide both sides by pi to get rid of it. When I do, I'm trying to see if I could reduce anything. Can I reduce c over pi? No. Pi over pi reduces, that goes away. So I'm left with circumference, our C over pi, is equal to our diameter. Now, notice the way they also wrote it. They wrote it as uh, circumference over pi equals diameter or diameter equals circumference over pi. Same thing. It's just um, the order switched. And with equations, with equal signs, you could do that. Doesn't make much of a difference. So we've taken our formula, solved for diameter. Now we want to use this formula that we've shuffled around and plug in our circumference. Our circumference in this problem was 18. So we're going to take our diameter equals C over pi, 
and just plug in our number for circumference, plug in the 18. Now this problem said leave it in um, pi, but I'm gonna take it a little bit further. I have 18 over pi inches as my answer, but I also divided it on a calculator. I get 5.73 inches for my diameter of this bowl. So to sum it all up, guys, we took um, our equations, but now they have extra variables inside. Those are called literal equations. Specific types of literal equations are formulas, which are rules that either mathematicians or scientists or really anybody needs to use when looking at different areas, different circumferences, different measurements in real life. We could shuffle, we can solve, we can manipulate, we can move these equations around by dealing with our inverse operations we were dealing with when solving equations. And really, it's the same way as solving equations. You just have to be careful on what you can reduce. The majority of the time, you won't be able to reduce because you'll be working with a variable and a number. We took it one step further and we actually applied it by finding the diameter of this bowl. If you have any questions about it, guys, feel free to shoot me an email. Otherwise, I'll see you in class. Bye.